All right, so in, in this video, I want to start off by covering the um, two tape and from tape signal flow um, of the console. And um, so let's just get started. So I've actually got a mic input on 25 and to make it a bit more convenient, I want that on input nine. So I've just used cross patching from the mic line to the mic input so that that's going to appear on input nine. And we can see that there's some level here already. And I can set the gain here. I don't need phantom power in this case, but if, if you do, that's also there. And the other thing to check as well is that you're on the microphone input. So when I recall the console, you can see the red light on, which means that the channel path is gonna receive the microphone input. Okay, so I've got <clears throat> level here. The next place that that's going to appear is on my channel path fader. And if I turn that up to unity gain, that means no change. So I set the level here and I don't cut or boost it here. I just put that on zero, which is rubbed out on this desk, but it's about there. Um, the next place that that will go is to our main mix. And to preview the signal, I can use either the retro or the modern output. So both of those will allow me to monitor <coughs> my, my channel path or my main mix. And then if I turn up the speakers. Come on. We've, got, we've got signal. But at this stage, that's not yet um, in Pro Tools. So what we need to do is in Pro Tools and Hopefully you can see that over there. Move it a bit further this way. So I've created a new track in Pro Tools here for recording. As you can see, I've got some previously recorded signals, which we'll talk about later. But for the um, new track, I've created a new track and I'm gonna set the input to nine or to wherever I've patched in. And also the output I'm gonna leave as nine. So basically, as long as we've set the in and the outputs to uh, the number where our signal is, you can hit record enable or input monitor in this case, and we'll see um, some metering happen. So I can bring the fader here. I've gone actually just between songs, so I'll start a new song. And we can see level in Pro Tools. So what I want to do now, knowing that the signal is going to Pro Tools, is select number nine and then in the center section here I want to take that off the main mix. So if I turn up the volume you should hear the signal go away when I disconnect this from the main mix. Okay, so that's that's what should be happening but the signal's still going to Pro Tools. And then we just need to monitor the post tape signal to make sure that we're hearing exactly what we're recording. So um, I could switch in my monitor source section to monitor mix, which is the other fader here. And then all I need to do is go over to my monitor path in the, the module, the relevant module, and turn that monitor path up. And to test that we're monitoring post tape only, I can move the fader in Pro Tools. And if you hear the signal go away, then you know that you're hearing the effect of Pro Tools or after Pro Tools. Option click to set that back to zero. And that's almost it. I recommend that we use this monitor to mains button which will assign the monitor path, which is all of these maroon pots, and it, it ends up on the monitor fader. It will send the monitor to the main mix, and that way, if we're in an overdub scenario, I can monitor my currently recording signal, the signal I'm trying to record now, on the monitor path, but I can also monitor previously recorded signals on the channel path. So by flipping the input here to DAW, 
you can see the light changing to a sort of orange or yellow color and I'll do that for the signals I've already recorded and then we can have the kick drum snare bass overheads keyboards and so so we're listening to these on the channel path and this on the monitor path. 